Hi. An issue that I've always struggled with in Resolve is getting real-time smooth playback of my video on the edit page. Oddly, when I do full playback on the color page, it works just fine. I always run with the timeline set to smart caching, but this still doesn't guarantee smooth playback for me. However, those days are behind me now with Resolve 18. Resolve 18 has introduced a simplified proxy generation and management system that is what we will cover in this video. We'll start with the new application that comes bundled with Resolve. With the new version of Resolve, you'll receive the separate Blackmagic proxy generator application. It also comes with the free version of Resolve, and in that instance, it's called Blackmagic Proxy Generator Lite. With the paid version, the proxy generator gives you access to the studio version features like more source codecs and GPU acceleration on Windows and Linux for H.264, H.265 encode and decode. In Windows, it will be in C colon program files, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve. On the Mac, it's in the Applications folder. It's at the root level of the Applications folder on the Mac, not in the Resolve subfolder. Upon launching the application, it will ask for a folder location. This is the Watch folder. This is where your footage is located that you want to have transcoded into proxy files. If you've previously launched the app and set a Watch folder, it will skip this initial prompting for a Watch folder location. Every five minutes, Yes, I timed it. The proxy generator will pull this folder for new files. When it finds a new file, it will transcode it into the proxy format that you choose and then place them into a subfolder of the watch called proxy. The folder name proxy is reserved for this use so you cannot create your own footage subfolder under your watch folder called proxy. After you choose the folder location, you'll be presented with this interface. It's the same on the paid and light versions. At the top is a processing status bar to show you the current progress of the current transcode. The left side of the progress bar indicates an overall progress percentage. The middle number shows how many frames per second the app is transcoding the media at. And the right end shows a estimated time remaining. At the right side of that is a start button to make the app start watching the folder and transcoding when new media is found. The Windows version doesn't offer ProRes as an option. We have three options that we can choose as transcode formats. The first is H.264 1080p half res. I'm not sure why they say 1080p for that option since it produces a file that is half of that at 960 by 540, but technically I guess it's accurate. This is followed by the full resolution version of that setting. Below this is the same 1080 resolution, but offers a 10-bit H.265 codec. On the Mac, you're also offered ProRes 422 at 1080p as well. The ProRes option is not offered on Windows, as previously noted. Below the transcode option radio buttons is a list of your watch folders as you can specify more than one. This will come in handy as I'll show in just a bit. It displays the disk volume name, the name of the watch folder, and the current status of that watch folder. It doesn't show the entire path, just the folder name. While the application waits for new media to show up, it will show waiting. If it has fully processed the watch folder, it will show completed in green. At the bottom of that list is a space status bar that shows how much disk space will be needed to create the current set of proxies. At the very bottom of the UI is a set of buttons to allow you to add a new watch folder, remove the currently selected watch folder or watch folders, or show the location of the currently selected watch folder in the Finder on the Mac or the File Explorer on Windows. To the right of those is a button to delete the current set of proxies in the proxy subfolder of the currently selected watch folder. And finally, at the far right is a button marked Extract Proxies. This button will open a file location browser and will copy the current set of proxies from the currently selected watch folder to whatever destination folder you select in the file browser. Note that when the start button at the top has been clicked and it displays stop, obviously clicking it again will stop the application from processing more proxies. But 
While it is processing, the bottom Remove button, Delete Proxies, and Extract Proxy buttons will all be disabled and cannot be used until you stop the app processing by clicking on the upper right-hand Stop button. That pretty much covers the app itself. Before we jump into Resolve, I'll show you something that I do before I start a new project that impacts how I use the new proxy features. I'm on a Mac, but this technique will work using the Windows File Explorer as well. I keep a folder on my system called Project Template. Inside of this folder, I have three subfolders. They are Clips, Stills, and Audio. Inside of the Clips folder, I have two more folders called Camera Originals, where I store clips that I've created, and another folder called Stock, since it's common for me to include stock footage in a given project. I duplicate this folder and rename it to be the name of my current project. Then I'll add the media to my folders. Now, inside of Resolve, I just drag the subfolders of the new template copy over to the left bin side of the media pool and drop it on Master, and Resolve will replicate the folder structure as bins. The Finder on the Mac supports tags that you can add to aid in searching and sorting, and Resolve will also import that metadata when you use this technique. It doesn't matter if you generate your proxies before or after doing this. Resolve will see the proxy folder and omit it if you drag its parent into the media pool to reduce bin clutter. Even if you specifically drag the proxy folder into the media pool, Resolve will not add it. Now I'll fire up the Blackmagic proxy generator. The proxy generator will allow me to just add the clips folder as a watch folder. I don't need to add the separate camera originals and stock folders. The proxy generator will find those subfolders and include them as part of the watch folder transcoding any files found within those subfolders. Instead of using the Add button, I can also just drag and drop the Clips folder into the watch list like this. I'll use the H264 8-bit Full 1080 option. Before we start the transcode operation, I'll expand the folders in the Finder so you can see what is happening there. In the list of watch folders, the status is indicated as waiting. Now that all of that is done, I can generate the proxies by clicking Start. You can see the status bar indicating the overall progress of the transcoding. The status in the watch folder will say processing and the current file number and total like this. Once it's finished, it'll say completed in green as you see here. Note that the app generated separate proxy folders for each of the subfolders in clips that contain the newly created proxy clips. The camera originals were BRAW files and as you can see they were transcoded to QuickTime MOV containers and the Mac Finder status shows that they're encoded as H.264. Okay, let's get into Resolve and see how Resolve manages these files. Inside of Resolve, note that in the media pool I do not have any proxy folders included cluttering up my bin structure. Resolve sees the reserved folder name of proxy and automatically will use it without any intervention by the user. Resolve will also use the proxies by default instead of the camera originals. I've already created a timeline with some of the footage for this demo. To switch back to the camera original files on the cut page, you can click this button here next to the timecode above the viewer pane. It'll give you three option drop down where you can choose from disable all proxies, prefer proxies, or prefer camera originals. Under the playback menu at the top of the Resolve UI in the menu section, the second item down is proxy handling, and we have the same three options. For other screens in Resolve, such as the Edit or Color Pages, you'll use the Playback menu to control this as a dedicated button for it only exists on the cut page. Normally, clips in the media pool just have a film clip icon next to them in the list view like this. If you have preferred camera original selected in the Playback menu, you'll see this film strip icon like this. If you have generated proxies and selected Prefer Proxies in the Playback menu, 
The icon will change to this film clip with a still camera behind it to indicate that proxy files are currently active and in use. I should also point out that if you have preferred camera original selected, you can at that point import the reserved proxy folder into the media pool since you're telling Resolve to ignore proxies. If you're using thumbnail view in the media pool, there will be no icon if you have preferred camera original selected but there will be the film clip and still camera icon in the lower left corner if you have prefer proxies selected. On the edit page here I have my timeline and you can see I have a clip of a light meter on a little table here and this clip is not color corrected it retains its low contrast and saturation look of the log format that it was shot in. For editing I don't need color correction until I'm done with the edit. Once that is complete, I can pop over to the color page, set the playback to preferred camera originals, and then color correct the clips. Obviously, it's important to select the camera originals once you get to color correction, as you don't want to waste your time color correcting the proxies. If you do correct using the proxies and then switch to the camera originals, Resolve will apply your corrections to the camera originals and doesn't throw them away. But if you shot on 12-bit RAW, for example, you'll want to use the camera originals instead of the 8 or 10-bit super compressed proxies to get the full dynamic range and color capabilities of your footage. One last couple of items regarding the proxy generator. Since it only pulls the watch folders every five minutes, you can click the stop and then start button to force it to process new files that you add instead of waiting for it to figure out the new files have arrived. And finally, the proxy generator doesn't, sadly, support Cinema DNG raw files. You're on your own with those. So that's it, a very nice automated process that should ensure that you get nice, clean, real-time playback of your media in Resolve while you edit. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope you got something out of it. If you liked the video, please click like, as that helps other folks find it. And until the next video, take care.